Today, as we speak, uh, mankind is in a foot race against globalist demons who are determined to trigger World War III while they still can. The White House is directing NATO in a hellish game of thermonuclear chicken gambling that President Putin will keep a cool, steady hand on Russia's nuclear trigger. So why is this desperate rush to war? Well, just two days ago, the Wall Street Journal uh, ran an article uh, headlined, Republican opposition to helping Ukraine grows, uh, the Wall Street Journal finds, becoming a partisan issue. Now, here's the guts of the article. They say that 48% of Republicans now say that the U.S. is doing too much in Ukraine. The opposition to arming Ukraine has riven, risen a stunning 700% just since the spring. But the resistance is stronger still because today uh, only 35% of Republicans and 45% of independents still support sending more aid to Ukraine. Most Republicans and most independents say no more aid for Ukraine. What is happening because of this is that Ukraine has become a Democrat war. Now, the midterm elections are looking bad for the war hawks. Wall Street Journal <coughs> reported a new poll that showed a very dramatic 27% shift toward Republicans among suburban white women who have formed in recent years a, a key part of the Democrat base. As of today, it appears that Republicans are almost certain to win the House, uh, where the Democratic majority is already razor thin. If Republicans flip just four seats from Democrat to Republican, the Republicans will win control. Virginia alone, just one state, could conceivably flip three of those four states red. Uh, Republicans are also quite likely to win the Senate, uh, which right now is tied 50-50, uh, half and half Republicans and Democrats with the Vice President breaking ties. Uh, already, we see uh, Republican senators coming on the scene, like J.D. Vance in Ohio, someone who is virtually certain to win that election, and possibly Blake Masters of Arizona. And both of these are opponents of new war funding. Uh, they, this new wave will join the existing opponents of, uh, of war funding in the Senate. NATO and Ukraine are acutely aware of Republican anti-war momentum going into the elections, and they are not sitting idle, and uh, they are taking action. So this realization that there will be this electoral shift uh, has accelerated the drive towards World War III, uh, which is well underway. Now, in April and May, the U.S. shared signals intelligence that helped Ukraine assassinate 13 Russian generals and uh, which sank the flagship of the Russian fleet, the cruiser Moskova. NATO anti-ship missiles sent 300 young Russian sailors to the bottom of the Black Sea in that attack. On May the 19th, there was a headline in Business Insider that read, quote, Biden is furious about the leaks saying U.S. intelligence helped Ukraine kill Russian generals and sink its warship. When the U.S. coordination was disclosed, President Biden was furious, not because it happened, but because it was revealed, because it was made clear to the American public what had happened. The sanctions imposed by the U.S. and the European Union, uh, of course, have cut most of Europe's vital national natural gas imports from Russia by now. With winter approaching this year, 
protests have been breaking out across Europe, people demanding uh, fuel for heat. And um, the, uh, the people are demanding that, uh, that the gas pipelines from Russia into Germany and from there to the rest of Europe be reopened. In order to defang these growing protests, NATO has sabotaged the Nord Stream 1 and 2 undersea pipelines, and they did this on September the 26th. They did it in order to ensure that any attempts to reopen them before winter would be futile. Now, the White House approved those attacks on Europe's pipelines. It's important to understand the United States is NATO and NATO is the United States. We dominate it not only financially, but with the key officials who run the organization. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, there was, uh, after the uh, explosion of, of both of those undersea pipelines, there was a cell phone text from British Prime Minister Liz Truss to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, uh, and it was intercepted just one minute after these massive detonations. In the cryptic message, she simply said, it's done. On October the 8th, British commandos planned a sophisticated Ukrainian attack, or series of attacks actually on the Kerch Bridge connecting Crimea to mainland Russia. Now, Russian citizens, we need to understand, uniformly consider Crimea to be part of Russia. It has been historically for 500 years, and they consider it to be today, which it is under Russian law. NATO's attacks on the Crimea, <clears throat> NATO attacks to destroy the Kerch Bridge are uniformly considered as attacks on Russia itself. <clears throat> Moving forward, CNN now reports that as recently as November the 2nd, saboteurs have infiltrated deep inside Russia itself, and they launched an attack destroying Russian attack helicopters with time bombs. Now, this attack was 600 miles inside Russia from the Ukrainian border. However, it was just 21 miles inside the Russian border from Latvia, another uh, very aggressive NATO member state. These attacks inside NATO uh, are designed to make it possible for Russia to trip up and to miscalculate, perhaps triggering a full out nuclear response by NATO, uh, one that could trigger the, the ultimate conflagration. The United States, by the way, and I know this from personal experience, often does this type of thing where they will, they will launch some sort of a, a mission that is designed to cause the other side to overreact or to react in a way that is negative and to provide the pretext than for a counterattack. Um, so this is, this is a very, very dangerous thing, attacking inside of Russia itself. In late October and November, two ultra-secretive US ballistic missile submarines surfaced in a dazzling display of nuclear brinksmanship. A clear warning to Russia that if their nuclear missiles or, or that if, if, if Russia responded uh, to the nuclear, to, to the, um, I apologize, if they responded to the Ukrainian attacks that were being launched against them, and they somehow crossed some invisible line, that nuclear missiles from NATO would rain down on Moscow and St. Petersburg 
in a Pearl Harbor style nuclear surprise attack on Russian cities. This is clearly the only purpose of deliberately surfacing those two uh, ballistic missile firing submarines. <clears throat> We've reached a point where it is absolutely vital that the White House plans and the British plans must be exposed. The decline in support for the Ukrainian war uh, has been driven by the fact that voters are learning that a violent coup was instigated by the CIA and British MI6 back in 2014. And it was that coup that overthrew Ukraine's duly elected government, uh, leading directly to the present war in Ukraine. <clears throat> As the roots of war <clears throat> trace back to uh, Obama's White House and to number 10 Downing Street, support for the war, it has been collapsing. The support for the war is likely to wither even more once voters are told how British Prime Minister Boris Johnson flew unexpectedly to Kiev in order to halt peace talks that had nearly ended the fighting between Russia and Ukraine just two months after fighting started and before most of the casualties had ever occurred. Since the time that Boris Johnson <clears throat> broke up those peace talks, clearly with the approval of the White House, British and American insistence on continuing the war has resulted in the death of easily 100,000 good soldiers on both sides. It's crippled twice that number and it has devastated the region. Joe Biden could end this war at any time. He chooses not to, he chooses war. Our government is no longer responding to its people. Instead, it obeys the dictates of globalists, the boys from Davos and a whole matrix of other globalist outfits, the kings, the princes, captains of industry, the billionaire celebrities, and dynasty families. Those whose true allegiance is to no land and no people but themselves. Men and women who grow fabulously rich on the blood of the men they kill. In closing, I, I just like to thank uh, the Schiller Institute, uh, which has become the preeminent uh, voice for world peace. And I'd like to thank uh, the heroic young men and women, the gutsy kids in their early 20s, uh, whose raw courage is confronting some of these, some of these politicians and exposing them for what they're doing. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today.